morning, January the 6th, 2024. All right. So, uh, brought this art. It's a GM workhorse, All right? La Palma, made by Monaco Gasser. Pretty good quality. His uh, was when he was driving down the road, the refrigerator would drop out. And he also said, well, it didn't go over to the automatic propane. All right. So, a couple combinations. One, well, we're losing 12 volts. Well, that's hot up there. Uh, there we go. That was my stove. Uh, so, let's look at this. I said, all right, let me plug in, and I'm used to seeing some things. If you remember, I did another video about how I put a 50 amp right here that close. Look, it's like three feet, four foot away. And I leave this cheap one hooked up. And but I'm used to seeing a certain amount of things, right? All right, so this is leg one, leg two, and neutral in the middle. So when I'm plugged in, the shore power, whatever you want to call it, pedestal, I'm used to most things to have an inverter converter right there, a Xantrex 458. And it says it is let me get this out of the way. It is charging gel one. Alright, that'd be inverter. This is on and off, but it has a remote panel folks right here. So I said alright. Let's get back to what I was talking about. That box right there, even if you have a converter. Now, an inverter is a, takes 12 volt DC, makes 120. When it sees AC coming, AC coming in from the shore power or the pedestal, it becomes a battery charger. And I'm used to seeing certain readings. So I turn the breaker on, right? Down here, and I say, hey, I'll just leave this on there all the time, so let's take it off. We got zero amps, 20. This is a cold bolt. I got a better one, but this is the one you'll probably go buy. All right, so I'm going to put it on leg one. I go, man, that's, a, that's 110 milliamps, like 0 0.10 amp. So let me check leg two. Wow, there's a little more, 0.14. Nah, that ain't right. This converter inverter combination unit what it's called the manufacturer of it is called xantrex 458 all right modified side wave you can't really run a compressor motor on them like residential refrigerator ac units oh you can they won't last that long folks even your drill your electric plug-in drill won't last that long your wife's hair dryer won't last that long let's not get into that all right now I said, man, something wrong. So I go over here. I said, well, next step would be, let's check the output voltage. Maybe the battery charger part of the combination unit inverter converter. That's what it's called, a combination unit inverter converter. We can give it all the name we want. Magnum, Victron, Xantrex. We can come up with all kinds of names The manufacturer. The box itself is a combination unit inverter converter. So let me put you on pause. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to go, let me see if this thing is actually putting out voltage. The light said it was charging. All right. If the batteries were fully charged, it's going to put out more AC amps than that over there. Lord. All right. So let me put you on pause. All right. So it's 13.8 here. And I'm hooked to the positive negative here. And it says it's charging 13.8. Folks, that AC reading over there is supposed to be more on my clamp on amp meter. All right, so now I'm going to check at the batteries. Put you on pause. All right, so one thing about a combination unit or an, or an inverter on itself or a converter, it's coupled directly to the battery. It should not go through. A switch, a uh, connect, disconnect, whether automatic or manual. 
okay? If you don't know these words, you need to start learning them. Uh, this is what this is about. Let's go. I'm going to turn it around again. Now, that red cable there, they come through there, the red and the black. All right, so I'm going to go here. I got, and I don't like this meter because the the timer of the uh, backlight. So I got 13.7. I said, wow, that's pretty good. 20 volt DC scale. You can see it right there, 20 volt DC scale. The decimal should be right in there. Let's see, so we don't lose the backlight. 13.7. So, all right, let me go to the other side of the fuse. Oh, look at that, 12.4. 13.5. 12.4. Folks, we blew a big fuse there. All right. Now, that's why that ain't pulling that many amps. Now, folks, that's a 250 amp fuse. Woo! Boy, we could fry up some chicken on that. Um, anyway, so that's a lot of heat. Remember, amperage creates heat. Now, a couple things. I did. I did a uh, physical inspection before I did all this. I went through everything already. Uh, I'm just used to seeing numbers, right? So I want you to get used to it. Um, let, let's do a real quick check. So I said, all right, we checked that output. At the converter, it said it was charging. I said, all right, hold on now. It's got a remote control. Hold on, baby. That was messed up inside. So let's go inside. Put you on pause. All right, hold on. All right, so there's the Xantrax remote control panel. It's saying the battery's fully charged, which that's a lie. It's saying it's 13 volts, which technically it is because it's coming out of the inverter, not what's at our combination unit inverter converter, not what's at the, uh, the so-called... Let me see if there's a light in here. There we go. Oh, that made it better there. Anyway, so it's at the converter. ACN. If you don't see that, then the transfer switch is probably messed up or one of your legs is messed up. It's charging less than 10 amps, and it's on a 50-amp breaker. You can change this. You have to manually change it because if you're on 30, from a 50 to 30, you got to tell that Xantrax that, all right? For y'all to plug into 15 amp cord, that's why that's there. All right, so here we go, folks. What'd you learn? Full battery. All right, 13.5 volts, not at the battery, at the inverter converter. This happens to be a Xantrex 458. Even by the panel there, let me turn my light out. It's a uh, Oh, my fat butt here. I should put one of the slides out. Did later. Um, so remember, what led me to all this? One customer complaint, well, or the member actually, he belongs to the Facebook page. He belongs to the website, and he belongs to my garage and school. And something else I have. <laughs> I don't even know what I got, right? All right, so I'll just keep rolling. Remember, I'm a diagnostician. I'm not an RV tech. I am not a diesel tech. I am not a gas tech. I'm not a car. I'm not a plane. I'm not a tank mechanic. I am a diagnostician. I'm trying to help you learn how to become 10% of what I've learned over the years because it'll save you thousands on your baby. And this is a nice looking coach for a gasser. So, where do we start at? We said, man, let's, uh, Turn the breaker off. All right. Flip. All right. And then we go, okay. And we plug it in. Now, I know it's on, but it's off. Pretending it's off. Because I plug in first. Then I flip the breaker back on. I go, oh, man, look at that. It says we got line one, line two. We got a neutral. We got our ground. We're okay. And I go, oh, man, let me just check it here. Because when I built my box, for those that are building at home, you can do this. Bring your legs out, your wires out. They're heavily coated anyway. Um, and if not, put them in a box so they're protected. 
All right, so now, sorry, let me check how many AC amps I've gotten because I know when the combination unit inverter or converter or inverter and converter comes on, I'm used to seeing a basic AC draw. Now, um, if the batteries are fully charged, I still have AC be converted to DC or what I call my battery charger in the coach. So I said, all right, let me turn this thing on. I said, hey, let me get my light on. Get on. Now I'll clamp on that first one. I go, man, let me look at this. I said, whoa, that's like low amps. I said, hey, maybe I'm on the wrong leg. That's the neutral. All right, 0 0.08. 0 0.14. 0 0.12. All right, so folks, that's video one. All right, I did find out what the problem was. I showed you how to troubleshoot it. Just because those little panels inside say everything's everything and everything's honky, don't worry, everything's good, don't mean it is. The motto is, not guess. We don't have all this stuff in our shop, school. Hey, you want to come lift weights with me? Go ahead. Um, I'm getting back in shape and it ain't got nothing to do with New Year's. Uh, I've been doing it since Thanksgiving. Uh, here's the office, right? Here's the window I took apart. I'm getting ready to put that back together, finish up that video. I got three TVs to fix. I got a old manual grandfather's clock. I got a 1920 radio in there I got to fix. All right, that's where I talk to y'all when you call for calls and all that. All right, so this is video one. Folks, I'm telling you, it's a deal. I'm probably getting ready to raise my website up to $170 to $200 a year. The first time you use me, text me, and we set up an appointment to troubleshoot your RV, you're going to get that pack the first time, then you got me, for the rest of the year. I ain't trying to rebuild your damn coach for you. All right? Even cars, I do toads and scanners and you know that. I got a video channel with, I don't know, 680 videos. Uh, anyway, thanks. Got off a little bit of a ramp there. Um, now I'm going to show you what we're going to do to prove over there the AC voltage coming in, the AC amps getting to DC by that combination inverter converter. Converter makes AC voltage, makes DC out of it, battery charger, right? Everything works DC inside your coaches and campers. Your heaters, your propane heaters, your hydronic heaters, your uh, hot water tanks with 120 element, 120 volt element. The control modules 12 volt. Your AC units without 12 volts will not work uh, unless you put in a window unit at 120, <laughs> which I've seen. <laughs> God bless y'all. All right, so this is video one. You're going to see video two. This is a long one. I usually don't go past 10 minutes. Remember, folks, test not guess. Come on down to the school. Have fun with me. I got 50 amp water and sewage back here. You can stay inside here if I don't have a lot of work. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.